हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम बैक टू द बायोलॉजी क्लास सो इन द लास्ट क्लास वी डिड द टॉपिक ऑफ मस्कुलर टिश्यू वी अंडरस्टूड दैट द इट्स द मीजोडर्म डिराइव्ड टिश्यू इट व्हिच इज बेसिकली कंस्टिट्यूट्स 40 परसेंट ऑफ द टोटल बॉडी वेट ऑफ अ ह्यूमन अडल्ट ह्यूमन ऑन एन एवरेज देर आर थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ मसल्स वी लर्न इन द लास्ट क्लास दैट वॉज द नॉन स्ट्राइटेड एंड द स्ट्राइटेड अलॉन्ग विद द कार्डियक मसल्स or which are also called as the involuntary muscles voluntary muscles and the cardiac muscles are also the involuntary muscles so today we are going to start with the new topic and that is the neural tissue uh, also called as the nervous tissue actually for the higher organism instead of the new uh, nervous tissue it is called as the neural tissue so this uh, nervous tissue or the neural tissue is the specialized tissue with the property of excitability as well as the conductivity so these are the two properties which are found in the neural tissue and the tissue originates from the embryonic layer which is called as the ectoderm so ectoderm give rise to the to the neural tissue uh, the portion of the neural tissues are basically brain spinal cord and the nerves so three things constitute to form the neural tissue and the main cells of this tissue are definitely neurons within the tissue they are present in the association with the other types of cells we will be learning about today in the ependymal cells neurosecretory cells then we have the neuroglia cells and we have the neuron so we'll be learning about them in today's class so neuron word was coined by hertz in 1981 was a german scientist and neurons are considered as the longest cells of the human body and they form the structural functional unit of the nervous tissue or the neural tissue so they are the main functional and structural component but remember the number of the neurons are far less compared to the neuroglia cell we'll be talking about that later the uh, each neuron arise from the um, uh, arises in the embryo from a single neuroblast cell so this blast in the um, this uh, blast cell or neuroblast cell in the embryo give rises to the neuron and uh, we need to remember that there are some generalized structures which are which collectively form a neuron and those are cyton dendrites and the exon the uh, in neuron has a main cell body which is also called as the cyton also called as the cell body also called as the perikaryon or soma the cytoplasmic processes arising from it are called as neurites so these two things together are called as neurites these neurites can be divided into functionally and morphologically into two different types dendrites and the exon we all know dendrites are the one which pick the signal and exons are the one which pass it on to the next uh, exon next uh, neuron so this receives the signal and this passes on the signal the bundles of exons and dendrites are together called as nerves and the uh, nerves are sensory if they contain dendrites only and they are called as motor if they contain exons only and they are called as mixed if both the portions are present neurons are without centrosome we need to remember this point so that means there is no possibility of cell division so once they are fully formed they never divide again and they enter into g not phase of the interface throughout the life unless they are cancerous cells so cancerous cells uh, cancerous nervous uh, cells or the uh, cells which have again gained the property of division may start tumorous growth otherwise neurons do not divide at all so the the structure of the neuron contains the cyton so let's talk about cyton first cyton of most of the neuron occur in the gray matter and like a typical cell it contains every component of a eukaryotic cell that there will be a mitochondria there will be a golgi body then rer and then abundant cytoplasm which is called as the neuroplasm and a relatively large nucleus will be there and uh, the even the nucleolus would be big in size because it is rich in proteins the neuroplasm contain certain fibers which are important in conduction of the uh, nerve impulse so neurofibrils and neurotubules are there and then there are certain granules which you have learned in 10th class also which are called as the nissels granules nissel granules are nothing but a mass of ribosome and rer so you can call them as a mass of rer which has ribosome attached and their main function is to synthesize proteins these are large irregular masses and thus they are believed to be equivalent to what we call in a normal cell as a ribosome 
then we have neurofibrils also neurofibrils are for transmission of the impulse and then there are many mitochondria huge amount of golgi complex and the role of cyton basically is to perform metabolism and perform growth uh, the next thing is uh, the dendrites dendrites are efferent in nature or they are the receiving processes and exons are the efferent one and they are the they will be conducting the message to the next structure so dendrites can be one uh, to several and they are shorter they are branched and then nissel granules neurofibrils mitochondria they all are present in dendrites and they conduct impulse towards the cell body so that's why they are called as efferent or also called as the receiving processes the next one is the exon exon is also called as the excess cylinder or the efferent proce uh, processing because the uh, it's a single one which runs through a, uh, through a long length and it ends in a it ends in a telodendria now telo means the tip or the end and dendria here stands for the tree so a branched tree like structure will be always at the end you have done this diagram in the 10th class also this end is called as the telodendrion which has a knobbed endings which are the buttons uh, or the terminals of the synapses these terminal ends meet with the dendrite of the next neuron you have done the synapses topic in the 10th class that same thing the synaptic knobs contain mitochondria and the secretory vesicles and then certain exons also give out twig like thick branches which are called as collateral branches we know this concept also that there can be a branch coming out from the exon which are called as the collateral branches the membrane of the exon is called as the exolema and its cytoplasm is called as the exoplasm